Mountain Meadows Massacre, refer to it as the first 9-11. It happened on September 11th, 1857, and although it was more than a century and a half ago, what happened in the southern Utah Valley is still an open wound for family members of the victims and survivors. Clint Olivier joins us with Valley Connections to the story and a Clovis family search for justice. Clint? Well, guys, the story of the Mountain Meadows Massacre was for the most part buried in the history of the Old West until a groundbreaking book came out about 50 years ago. But the story hasn't been forgotten by the descendants of those who died so long ago at the Mountain Meadows. Living history at Fort Tejon, just south of Bakersfield. The soldiers or dragoons stationed here 150 years ago represented a small but important part of the story of the Mountain Meadows Massacre in southern Utah. In 1857, a wagon train made up of 120 men, women, and children was on its way from Arkansas to what is now Southeast Fresno when they were attacked and slaughtered by a militia of members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or Mormons. Only 17 small children survived, spared because they were believed to be too young to tell the tale. Historians say the bodies of the dead weren't buried, but instead were left in the open. In early 1859, the Fort Tejon Dragoons were sent to investigate the massacre. The soldiers were among the first to bear witness to what happened. What they find are some remnants of clothing, um, the hair, uh, parts of bodies. Bob Zaracor portrays a Dragoon First Sergeant. Zaracor tells the story of Major James Carleton's now famous report of what was found at Mountain Meadows. He was appalled by what he saw, and apparently the rest of the dragoons in that company were. They couldn't believe that somebody would do something like that. The soldiers buried the bones they could find in a mass grave and built a marker on the site. The present-day monument is based on their design. With the release of Carleton's report, the world began to learn what happened in this valley. I've been interested in this for a long time. Fast forward a century and a half. Frank Kirkman and his wife Diane are members of the Mountain Meadows Monument Foundation. Kirkman's connection to the massacre is a big one. The Arkansans were on their way to Kirkman's great-great-grandfather's ranch in what is now southeast Fresno. The Kirkmans live in Clovis, and they traveled to southern Utah to take part in the ceremonies marking the massacre's 150th anniversary. Part of the events, a meeting of the Foundation's Board of Directors. It's been a goal of mine to uh, help uh, get uh, federal stewardship over the uh, uh, massacre site. Kirkman and the MMMF want the land in federal hands, but right now the Mormon Church owns and maintains Mountain Meadows. In fact, the church built the two existing monuments in memory of those who died. In their meeting, the board debated the best way to ask the church to turn the massacre site over to be designated a national monument. It's a story about conflict and a story about religious zealotry. Historian and author Will Bagley says he supports the goal of the MMMF, and Bagley says it's not impossible to achieve. I believe that all the parties involved, the descendants of the victims, the descendants of the participants, all of whom have carried a terrible load, and the Latter-day Saint Church will recognize a common cause and will do something to preserve and protect. It's, a, it's an important archaeological site, no matter who owns it. Utah's state archaeologist Kevin Jones says Mountain Meadows qualifies for national monument status, but he can't predict what will ultimately happen to the land. Talking about it is always an important part of the process. Whether it reaches a, a, an ultimate resolution to anyone's satisfaction is it's hard to say. However, the issue is easy for Frank and Diane Kirkman. For them, Mountain Meadows is hallowed ground, and Frank Kirkman hopes church leaders get the picture. Those people that are laying out there, my relatives that are laying out in the meadows, deserve a proper burial site that is uh, uh, looked over by uh, a, a proper agency. Now, tomorrow night, we'll follow the Kirkmans as they join the descendants of both the massacre victims and perpetrators 
As they commemorate the 150th anniversary, we'll also hear from Mormon church leaders about their plans for the future of Mountain Meadows. Took some research. Yeah, it sure did. Nice job. Boy, nice, nice visuals there. Thanks, Cliff. All right. The story has also gained interest this year, partly due to this year's release of the feature film September Dawn, starring John Boyd. Don't forget to join us tomorrow night for part two of Justice at Mountain Meadows. And for more on our special assignments, you can go to our website at kmph.com. There you'll find videos, blogs, and slideshows on these stories. Just click on the special assignment icon located on the left-hand side of the page. Well, before Disney star Miley's